Something about this logo, man. I love this logo. It brings me way back, way back. And this, my friends, is one, just one of, one of the many, of my favorite shoes of all time. Hey, what's good guys? My name's Chris. Welcome back to the official weartesters.com YouTube channel. Today, we got a detailed look and review on these bad boys right here. This is the Reebok Question black toe colorway, but they're calling them the Why Not Us, and I'll explain that in just a second. However, these guys right here, the specific colorway has released before, way back in the day, 1997, 98-ish. And then he actually wore these, and by he, I mean the man, one of the greatest of all times, at least one of the greatest small guys of all times. But this dude right here, Allen Iverson, was like an inspiration to people like me under a certain mark well under the six foot mark even though he was not quite as short as me but he was one of those guys where he's playing in the land of big men you know going up against Shaq. is Kyrie considered small i think he's taller than ai but he's small nba standard wise i only ask because i saw something where they said can we finally admit that Kyrie is better than alan iverson okay so that's a different discussion okay <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's a, that, I have to process that. Better ball handler? Probably. But could he carry a team as as the 76ers all the way to the finals against Shaq, Kobe, and the Lakers? No, he could not. He had his chance a couple of times, and now look at him. He's got everybody and their mom on that roster over there in Brooklyn. I cannot believe how many players are over there. It looks like a an all-star team like it's just it's ridiculous so a better overall player i would say no a better ball handler there's an argument to be had there i would lean towards yes and this is coming from a massive ai fan i think that Kyrie has some of the best handles i've ever seen Bitchy. now as far as alan iverson goes and this shoe and why it's called the why not us is because back in 2001 he was i don't want to call him like the leader of the squad or whatever but the eastern conference team in the all-star game okay so there's that i think this is after the uh yeah this is right Right after this uh, after jordan retired in 99 so like 2000 2001 this is when there was no mj and all of them it, it's kind of like how like the warriors were for a little bit where it's like oh the western conference is the warriors plus some other guys where that was like what the eastern conference teams used to look like in the nba where it was like oh it's three chicago bulls and then some other guys back then mj and all of them were all dispersed and so the eastern conference was made up of a lot of quote unquote little guys even though they weren't that little they were some really hefty players vince carter was on the team latrell Spreewell, if you guys remember him, he was a beast. Ask PJ, he knows. Obviously, Allen Iverson, I guess he was like the leader of the team. Matumbo was there and everything like that. But basically, everybody was discounting this squad, being like, man, they're not going to beat the Western Conference. And then Allen Iverson ended up becoming the MVP of the All-Star Game, and they beat the Western Conference team. And it was supposedly said while he was on the bench, man, why not us? And so that's where these come from. And he wore this shoe in that game. It's funny because his sneaker history is all over the place. We actually have a great detailed article about that, noting every single shoe he's worn from college all the way up to the professional league and we have that available right now over at wordtesters.com if you wanted to check it out click the link in the description box can we add those cards up there too so we'll do that as well and you can go and check it out but he's gone back to the Reebok question numerous times for numerous different reasons and during that all-star game that shoe of the year was the answer four that was his fifth model and he still went back and was just like I'm gonna wear these because he loves this shoe and I don't blame him. I love this shoe too. Although those answer fours that he was wearing in promo stuff for that all-star lead up game was the upcoming white and red answer four. <laughs> now the reason why I like this shoe in this particular colorway is for a personal reason. It's because this guy right here, man, this is so close to the first pair of questions I ever wore. Like the first pair that I ever wore look damn near just like this, but they had an icy blue bottom and then all of the vector logos are uh, trimmed in gold. So those were were like my first Reebok question experience and they were so comfortable. They were amazing. The quality of leather, everything was just awesome. They don't make them like that anymore, unfortunately. So these aren't quite as good as those, but there's still some redeeming qualities to something like this. The history being one of them. The second being that leather build. This leather is awesome. It's not all leather everything, but damn near. But first, look at that outsole, man. It's just iconic. It's one of those weird things where like this doesn't look like it would grip, but it sure as hell did. At least it did back in the day. And I don't even remember needing to wipe these that much and then i did do a performance review early on in youtube you can also see down in the back there where hexalite used to be they still say it's there but it's not now the original hexalite was not a perfect hexagon it was actually like a ovally shaped
perfect. So this guy right here is a perfect hex unit, but it's not like the originals. This is just die cut plastic. It does provide a little bit of cushion, but not like anything like the originals. The originals felt amazing. Like it's one of the most comfortable things I've ever put on ever. Besides like Zoom Air, the original Hexalite was a beast. I really wish that they would go back and like, I don't know, make it again. But again, as far as the tech specs go for the shoe, it's just an EVA midsole. There was a hex unit in the back underfoot, not on the side. These are just there for visuals and stuff like that. And they've always been like that. And then just foam in the forefoot. But the originals used to have a beefy ass insole, the shock pad, and these just have this little ass thing. Now, some of the cool stuff that they left, like I was saying earlier, is the leather. So we've got really nice leather all the way through. Most people are probably just using these for casual nowadays. And I understand this wasn't even a great basketball shoe back then, especially the lockdown. The lockdown was just real sloppy. This heel and everything would be real floppy, probably because they're so back heavy. The fact that AI would just break everybody's ankles wearing this is just a feat in and of itself. And then he was going up against like super big physical dudes and stuff like that. The league was so different back then. It's crazy. But again, the materials on these guys, super nice. I love the toe because it's actually not tumbled. You've got that tumbly texture along most of the upper, but the toe is so smooth. It's almost just like the pair that I had when I was a kid, man. I really love those. Like I wish that they would put that colorway back out with the ice bottom and the gold stitching. Those were sick, man. Now, some of the areas that are not leather would be the tongue right here. And and this is probably the most different aspect of this shoe compared to the PE that he actually wore in the game. I believe that the PE that he wore used a reflective material right here that was silver, whereas they changed things up a little bit and uh, just made it white. I don't know why, but they did. And then this little section right where the question logo or branding is, that's actually a vinyl as well. Something that's real interesting though is right back on the tongue. Why not us? It's very got milk. It reminds me of like uh, when Bugs Bunny and stuff used to team it up with Jordan brand back in the day. Like it kind of reminds me of like a Looney Tunes-ish looking thing. Whenever brands put marketing things like that on their footwear, it always makes me want to like throw it back. You go and put it on the shoe, why not? Uh, so I'm, I'm going to ask you, why not real Hexalite? Why not? Why not the shock pad insult? Now my favorite aspect of the shoe, per usual, is the booty. Think of that three right back there. Even though it's crooked, I still like it. Now as far as sizing is concerned, I would go true to size. That's what I did here, and I think they fit perfectly. By the way, I did want to thank Reebok for sending these over. I know that I gave them a little bit of sh for some of the things that they don't put on there, but I do appreciate that you actually sent me the shoe. I just want the fucking Hexalite back, and I want the insole. That's not too much to ask, is Obviously it? Obviously it is. <laughs> okay. Because you've because asked in every single question video that at least I've been a part of for them to do that especially the Hexalite, and it's just not happening. It's not, but I will keep begging for it <laughs> until you put it back on there. You know, I just really want them to like feel like they used to, because when I gush about a Reebok question, like people are like, especially you, like you're just like, oh, no, those are stupid. <laughs> it's like a giant big toe or and whatever. And as a runner, nobody wants black toes, okay? Hey man, it happens sometimes, all right? Hey, you know you're, you're really pushing yourself. I know, I have one right now. <laughs> Can't wait for your OnlyFans to, <laughs> to get a load Don't of that. Don't tell them. I know, my bad, I'm sorry. See, people are weird. <laughs> Okay, people are weird. Anyways, but yeah, I just think that these are just a great shoe. It's an iconic shoe. I really love this toe. I cannot tell you how nice this material is. I mean, I, I'm trying to, but like- you He's gushing, Yeah, guys. you won't believe me until you see it for yourself. So if you have a chance to check these out in store, I would highly recommend just touching them. Take that however you want to. I don't even care at this point. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's just, it is what it is. But no, I, I definitely suggest going and just checking them out. I think that they're awesome. Don't expect much from them as far as comfort goes. Again, they just don't feel like the originals hopefully one day and yeah i will not let it go though okay reebok so anytime these come out i'm gonna say something until you put it back he's very uh what do we always call you consistent i'm consistent yes. consistent very consistent anyways that pretty much takes care of for these guys again this is the reebok question in the why not us colorway also known as the black toast if you want to just keep it like super simple and uh if you grabbed a pair let me know what you think about them down below in the comment section i'd love to hear from you if you didn't grab them i know it's because they're reebok and it's not you know what i mean because they're not jordans they're not hyped up they're not cross over with uh, BBC. And what I mean by BBC is Billionaire Boys Club, not the other BBC that a lot of people th seem to think. Who's the other one? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so that was fun. Thank you once again for watching. Thanks for all the support. And until next time, guys, have a good one.